Hello, welcome to Frizy's Corner Bar. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. How's everybody doing tonight? So, uh, as always, we uh, love your comments. So, if you're joining us, uh, just let us know you're there. Ask us any questions. So, tonight's show we're excited about. It's called uh, When Pigs Fly because Mike is doing a pork tenderloin and I'm going to make an aviation cocktail along with some other gin cocktails. So you want to just talk a little bit about the gin? and Yeah, I actually, uh, we started this. I just made a crib sheet. Oh, but um, Oh, God. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm not It's me. always bad when he's got his, his yeah. crib sheet. Uh, I'm not certain. <laughs> anyway, um, a couple of weeks ago, we started to talk about the difference between dry gins and botanicals, and I wanted to kind of continue with that conversation. So um, gin is really just an alcohol that can be distilled from grains, beets, um, uh, what else? Uh, potatoes. Yeah, it can, it can be distilled basically from about anything, even, um, even some fruits and stuff like that. Um, and so there's a, a lot of different styles, and I was sort of amazed when I went in to look at all the different gins. So I'm just going to touch base on a few. Um, you probably see London Dry Gin a lot, and that is just um, an right. alcohol. We're going to feature that in a couple of our cocktails. Yes, tonight. and this is yeah. one of our favorite uh, dry gins that we we tend to buy is the Nolettes, and that is um, it's actually a Dutch gin um, from Holland, and then there. Um, so a dry gin basically is only distilled alcohol with juniper berries. So they basically um, use whatever they're going to make uh, the alcohol with, and then they add in juniper berries. So then a botanical gin. So actually, I have, let me put my glasses on so I can see here. So a London dry gin would basically be like Bombay, Sapphire, um, Gilby's, um, Beef Eaters, Nolettes. Um, those are your typical sort of London dry gins. Um, and uh, Old Tom gins, you probably see Old Tom, and that is an old style gin that was uh, developed back in um, the late 1800s. And that is a, a gin that is actually on the sweeter side. So if you've ever had an original Tom Collins, the Tom comes from using Old Tom gin, which I didn't know. But, um, but it's not a great gin to use with uh, Tangerine and Tonic because the sweetness of the tonic can um, blend with that gin and make the cocktail too sweet. Um, botanical gins, which we probably use the most, um, are an alcohol that has juniper, but then they can have any kind of other additives into that, such as like um, flowers, um, spices, coriander, and couple of our favorites for botanicals. There's some others that we have would be Uncle Val's. Um, they make a nice botanical gin. And Hendrix, that's a really nice botanical gin. And when you read the labels on them, it'll explain a little bit about what's all in it. And then a couple of new ones that Let's we have. Just keep them there. They can okay. see them right in the camera. They can see Can you them. guys see that? Yes, okay. they can. <laughs> these are two new ones that um, we picked up not too long ago. And these have a lot of different um, flowers. And, and the, um, the taste on them is just really amazing. And again, we're still discovering gin. You know, it's something that we've not really. Yeah, we used to. We used away. to not drink gin. Yeah. Like we, and. Uh, and we, I used to always say gin made me mean, but I, I really think it was. It's got nothing time. to do with the gin. I think it was the coin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, Navy Shrink Gin is usually like a 57 proof. That is a really strong gin. Um, it's like over 100 um, proof. And that is something that we use when we age cocktails because when you blend that to make like a Negroni and it all kind of melts together, you need to have a higher alcohol type gin um, just because you're blending it in and then uh, mixing it in and putting it in the oak cast. Um, Jennifer is also a Dutch gin and I've drank a lot of Jennifer because I've been to Amsterdam a bunch of times. And um, those tend to be more multi-based and they 
it's almost like drinking a whiskey. If you drink a straight Genevieve, it's almost like drinking some type of whiskey. However, if you go to the Frockling Bar over by the Red Light District, they have about 50 different styles of Genevieve, but you can never pick up the glass, which is interesting. So this lady will fill it to the top and then you have to stoop down, sip it, and then you can pick it up. If you pick it up too early before sipping it like that, she'll yell at you in Dutch. I don't know what she's saying, but basically don't pick it up. And then there's the fruity kind of gins, like a slow gin. And we don't really do anything with slow gin, so I'm not even going to go into that. Um, okay. Can I do just read a couple oh, comments? Go ahead. Well, comments? I got one thing left, then I got to get over to my okay. okay. Um, the last one I wanted to mention was um, Plymouth gin. You probably see Plymouth gin distilled in Plymouth, England. And it is a dry gin, but it's a little sweeter than a typical dry gin. So um, that's a very quick overview of gins. Um, don't be afraid of gin. Try it. Um, try. These are actually limited um, in terms of how long they'll be out. I have to get back yeah. over. So sorry. So, uh, that's okay. Well, Betsy Powell says, "Was just thinking. My dad called it evil gin. LOL." And then I also got a uh, a text from our friend Sue who said, "Gin, gin makes her mean too." So, uh, um, so the first cocktail I'm going to make is the gimlet. And the gimlet actually calls for a lime cordial. And now my aunt will say, a gimlet's not a gimlet unless it has Rose's lime juice in it. Um, I, I don't really uh, like to use ingredients that have preservatives or anything. That's why I make my own simple syrup. So I actually looked up a recipe for how to make a lime cordial. And there were a couple different recipes on the web. And some of them called for the lime juice to be cooked. Let me just hide that recipe so people can see. Some of them call for the lime juice to be cooked. And I really didn't um, want to cook the limes because there's also some scientific research that says when you, when you cook citrus, particularly lime, it kind of breaks down the flavor. So I found this raw cordial recipe, which is very simple, but you do need a couple days ahead. You basically just peel all uh, the flesh off a of lime and you want to use a good citrus peeler because you don't want to get a lot of the pith. And then you squeeze the limes and you put in half lime juice, 50% lime juice, one part lime juice to one part sugar. You let the sugar dissolve, then you put that all into a non-reactive, like a mason jar, a glass jar, non-reactive container. And then you kind of squeeze those uh, citrus peels and you put them into uh, the lime juice with the sugar and you let it set in the refrigerator. I actually let this sit in the refrigerator for a couple of days, at least 12 hours, I say. And you just shake it every you know, couple of days and then you uh, strain off the uh, citrus peel and then you let it cure for a, a day. Uh, just in the bottle, you let it rest for a day. What's great about this is it's really like a citrus and a simple syrup mixed together, but it will it actually preserves the citrus, so you can actually keep it in the refrigerator for up to a year. Whereas if you're squeezing your fresh lime juice or your fresh lemon juice, it can go, you know, it really doesn't stay good much longer than eight hours. So, uh, so here is the lime cordial. And this recipe is very simple because there's two ingredients. It's two and a half ounces of gin to one ounce of the lime cordial. If you don't have the lime cordial, you could just do one half an ounce of the juice and a half an ounce of simple syrup. So we made this last weekend with this Hendrix gin. As Mike had said, these are limited releases. Uh, this is the midsummer solstice, and then we also purchased the lunar. Uh, the midsummer solstice I really enjoy because it's very floral. There's a lot of, uh, you know, can kind of get ro notes of rose, and it just really made this gimlet taste delicious. Isn't that made from flowers that only bloom at night? No, that's the lunar gin. The lunar, okay. The lunar gin is... Um, the one that is the night blooming flowers. These are all what's in this gin are flowers that are harvested in the in the midsummer. So, and I'm doing five ounces of this because I'm making two cocktails so that uh, Mike and I can share a cocktail. 
I mean, she, each other. Oh, I'm not tail. drinking any. Huh? Oh, you're not? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, I thought more for me. <laughs> and then this is the ounce of the, so I'm doing two ounces of the lime cordial. And then I'm going to give this a good shake. I already have my two chilled coupe glasses all ready to take, take this in. Fill this with my shaker with ice. And then I'm going to shake it. I want to put my lid back on my uh, ice bucket here, and then it is going to take a double strain. And why do you double strain? Because you want you. I really don't like any of the crushed ice floating around, and if there's any remaining pulp in the citrus, it just makes for a nice, clean, even tasting cocktail. Okay, and then this takes a lemon, I mean a lime wheel. Just put, put it on the edge. And there is your gimlet. This would be a classic gimlet if I hadn't used the, uh, the uh, fancy gin. So. <laughs> Here you go, babe. Cheers. Cheers. I love you. Love you. Cheers, Cheers, everybody. everybody. Ah, That's so tasty. That is very good. Oh, my gosh. If you have any questions on Jen, um, feel free to ask them. Um, I can find out the answer for you. I'm sorry that I tried to cover that really quick because I'm... Dory, oh, because oh, I'm, I have something over there, and I could smell that it was starting to get a little too done, and I, I wanted to get back over to it to give it a stir. So, um, okay. okay. And uh, Dory said uh, we love our gimlets. Yum, absolutely. And Mike Overschmidt says that looks tasty and refreshing. It, it really is. is. It's and very good, and it's so simple. And then one of the drinks I'm going to make, the uh, Southside Lime Ricky. That's a really good one. Oh, and then Betsy says, you guys are too cute. <laughs> are the cutest. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, you. Thank you very much. Okay, so why don't you show us what you have going on here with your... Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is um, I have two pork tenderloins, and I actually just pulled two out of the oven. So I'm going to show you what they look like. Um, coming out. So I have that. Okay, so I'm just going to slide this under. Is that on the camera? Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. so I used um, crushed pork rinds, and pork rinds are a keto-friendly um, food. It's not high in sodium by any means. I think it was 280 milligrams per serving um, versus uh, breadcrumbs had 320, I think, for pantene unflavored. And what I have here are two pork uh, tenderloins, and I'm going to um, show you a couple things. So this one here, I've already trimmed out, and you can see there's hardly any of the fat left on there. Um, so I'm going to move that over. This one here I had uh, touched, so I'm going to show you, because pork tenderloins have like this, these little lines of fat. So I just started to go through with my knife and... Just grab a hold of it. You notice I have my gloves on so I don't cross contaminate or make any mess with stuff. So you're just kind of going through and you just kind of trim this out. You want to try to get out and just stick the knife right under there and just kind of pull that out. So you can see this one has a big slice here and it's, uh, you just grab onto it. Sometimes you can go right underneath this right underneath this, grab it, just pull along through there. So what you're trying to do is really just get it to a very nice lean piece of tenderloin. Um, and don't be afraid of pork because pork, I mean, yeah, there are fatty pieces of pork, uh, 
pork belly, you know, that's a very fatty piece of meat. Uh, pork chops are very, tend to be on the fattier side. We eat a lot of tenderloins. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll salt and pepper this, maybe add some other spices, and then I'll take a few slices of bacon and just wrap that around and then uh, bake this in the oven at something like 375, 400 degrees, depending on what I'm, I'm using. Um, I'm going to do this at 375 for about 30 minutes, um, give or take. And I start temping it at about 20, 25 minutes just to make sure I'm not going to overcook it because it is such a lean piece of meat. Um, you don't want to overcook pork ever. So, um, so as you can see, I kept that hand nice and clean. And then what I have here is some Dijon, some gray Poupon. Yes, we have great Poupon. And I'm gonna just take my little paintbrush and just sort of smear it on. And um, so you can add more or less, whatever you'd like. I just try to make sure the sides so can I just say a couple comments while you're sure. doing that? Okay, so we have a couple comments while he's uh, painting painting his uh, little his pepper pork there. Actually, I'll put a little in there now. Oops, I already showed that one. I'll show that one again. So Stephanie Norman says my my aunt says the same thing about having roses in her gimlet. It's yeah. absolutely a uh, um, a. a a flavor preference. And then Jim Southwick said he's got his shirt today. I love it. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, Jim. We, uh, and we do, I think we we have limited sizes left. I think we have a men's extra large and we have several smalls. So any of you ladies that want a small t-shirt out there, um, we have some extra. So just, uh, you know, comment on, you know, on the site and we can hook you up. All that painting made me tired. Okay, I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna show. Well, I'm not done yet. I have oh. to go back. Okay. So, well, yeah. so what, what we're using um, for pork rinds, so you can actually buy them at the store, crush them in a bag, and do it that way. We're using um, Pork King Good. Move it up just a little bit more. I can't. Yeah, that's good. All right. That's perfect. So, I'm actually using um, this is the Cajun Spicy. And then I have one that is just a, an original flavor. So I'm making two of these. And that's what I did with, over here is um, I have one that is an original flavor. And then I have one that is uh, spicy Cajun. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little of this on there. Um, normally you would wanna put this in a bowl. I'm, not, I'm just trying to do this in the essence of time. Okay. So that is that one, and then so this is the spicier one. I think I'll just pour some in there. I'm just trying to make sure I don't cross contaminate anything. And again, I'm not a professional chef. I just try a lot of different crazy recipes, and um, I like I like to cook and. I enjoy it, so. So Dory says we need a big group photo in our shirts. Yes, once we are all vaccinated, absolutely. And Betsy has said, I want the XL for Mike, it is claimed. So, <laughs> there you go, you got it, Betsy. All right. So what I'm gonna do, I don't have me on film for this, I just wanna spray this pan. With some Oops, cooking took, spray. I took it off screen when you walked away. So, all right, and then I'm just gonna pick up gently this, lay it right in there. Pick this one up. And this will go in the oven at 375 for about 30 minutes. Can I, can I start? 
Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the next cocktail that I'm going to make, but before I make the next cocktail, I am going to explain. I had done um, in the at the end of February, I did an experiment with preserving citrus, and I had um, I had frozen some. I had soaked some in a one part vinegar to four part water uh, vinegar bath for 30 minutes. And then the other ones I just, you know, kept, well, everything was washed. I just, I just washed. And, um, and then the other, uh, and you, you store them in Ziploc bags, you remove all of the air. The results of that experiment were the, and I was actually surprised, the, Citrus, and I'd say the, the limes didn't age as well as the lemons, but the cit the, li the lemons and the limes that I had soaked in the vinegar for the 30 minutes actually looked much better than the ones that were just in the refrigerator, not soaked. Um, I was not a fan of freezing the whole fruit because you have to actually let it thaw, and I, I never think that far in advance, but I love taking wedges and putting them in a Ziploc bag and freezing the wedges because then when you're cooking, you can just pull out one of those sliced wedges or if you're gonna have tea, and that was a perfect way for that. So, and then recently I got this container that I can now put my uh, put my citrus in and keep it in the refrigerator. And this is a Tupperware container that I I happen to, uh, to see because I, I was, the Ziploc bags were perfect, but I was going through a lot of Ziploc bags. So I wanted to try to find something that was actually uh, uh, reusable. So I do love that. My next citrus appliances that I got with was my citrus presses versus, I've always used this reamer and I was doing research on citrus and, and, and eating and tasting citrus. And they said, you know, the citrus press is better um, for a couple reasons. The, the reamer tends to get more of the pith flavor, that bitter flavor into the juice. Whereas when you press it, you don't get, you get actually more of the essential oils from the skin and less of the pith. So, and I will say I have enjoyed the press, and it's actually faster um, than, than it is to read the fruit. So this next drink I'm gonna make, I, I absolutely love this drink. This drink is called The Aviation. And so I'm gonna put the recipe up. And so I find what I did with it. Okay. So here is the Aviation. So now the Aviation uses dry gin. Um, so I'm using this Nolay's dry gin, which Mike you know, referenced. It also takes the Luxardo Maraschino liqueur, as well as cream de violet. And it's only a quarter ounce of the cream de violet. And this, a little of this goes a long way, so you want to make sure you don't do a too heavy. You, you don't want to overpour this. Um, Can you talk about the cream de violet? What it's made from? Well, it's it's really it's just it's a liqueur that's flavored with the, the actual violet flowers. So I will say there are a lot of different brands of violet liqueurs. This one is Giffords. This is a French brand. Um, there is, I think it's Moments. There's another, there's another brand. It's actually got a silver label on it, which is the one my son Max says is much better. But there are several different ones out there, and they will actually produce a much different color um, aviation. I will say most pictures of the aviation that you see online, I mean, they have these bright, bright purple colors. That's really not the color you're going to get. I think that those are, you know, enhanced, enhanced photos. So I'm going to do two ounces of the dry gin. I'm just making one of these because I'm going to make the other cocktail for Mike because this is going to be mine. A half an ounce of the Luxardo uh, cherry liqueur. This this was probably the first. Um, kind of interesting um, 
hadn't had liqueur we added to our uh, our liquor collection for a while we were making tons and tons of drinks with Luxardo liqueur, cherry liqueur. There are quite a few drinks to make with it and it's fun. Actually, when the other thing I wanted to mention too, when we were looking up uh, gin cocktails, and I'm gonna do a quarter ounce of this uh, violet liqueur. And then it is three quarters of an ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice, which I have here. So the, um, when we look, we're looking up cocktails. We love this site, Difference Guide. They have some, you know, great cocktail recipes. And on Difference Guide, there were over seven hundred cocktails made with gin. And the next highest liquor that they had on there was like a vodka cocktail, of which there were like over five hundred. So I was actually really surprised that. Uh, that most cocktails are made with gin. Now, I can say this: it is a British site, so because it's a British site and there is London derived gin, it may that may just be a uh, you know a preference of the uh, you know, author. So I'm gonna give this a shake. Shake it, baby, shake it. And this. Drink also goes in a chilled, uh, an already chilled coop. Or this is my, this is our Nick and Nora glass. I'm down to two coops, and as of last weekend, I'm down to two Collins glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. So I'm gonna pour this aviation. That was me that did that. Broke it. It's okay. I've broken my fair share of glasses. These Collins glasses we have are very thin. Yeah, they're, I can't handle that. I need mean, so, plastic cups. And then this takes a uh, a cherry, and I did finally replenish my Luxardo cherries. And cheers! There's your aviation, and uh, that is a uh, a really nice cocktail if you uh, are looking for something uh, something different. That that might be one if you don't want to invest in the uh, the cream de violet and the uh, luxardo. That might be one next time. Next time you go to a bar, you may want to uh, try that out. I'll taste it for you guys. Mm, that is tasty. Okay, let's. We gotta hurry because we're running out of time. We're running out of time. Okay. So let me uh, hide this recipe. I'm going to show the food cam, and then I'm going to hide this camera, and then we will. Uh, I'm getting better at plating, and I had have, I have one other thing that's not quite done that's going to go on here, but this is the pork tenderloin. I cooked it to about 145, 150. You don't need to cook pork at 160 anymore. That's kind of an old rumor. Uh, this is the spicy Cajun one. Over here, I took a Napa cabbage, and I diced it up. Um, first I cored it and then I diced it up. I sauteed uh, three slices of uh, Black Forest bacon. I get that at Trader Joe's because it's a very lean bacon and it's got it's just an amazing flavor to it. At least I like it. And then I took some purple onion. Once the bacon was halfway down, I threw the, the onion in there. Um, I added a little bit of pepper. And then I threw in the, um, the Napa cabbage. Typically, I do this with a purple cabbage. And um, when I was at Stop and Shop, I wasn't crazy about the way the purple cabbage looked. But the, they were just sticking these Napas out there, so I grabbed one of those. Um, and then I threw that in there, and I sauteed that around, got everything mixed up really nice. And then I threw in, um, I don't know, a couple of tablespoons of chicken stock. And then I put the lid on it just to let that... Uh, stock kind of steam the cabbage to reduce it down a little. Over here I have the horseradish that I made a few weeks back on one of the shows. Um, Which then, is really good. Yeah, it's actually, after a couple of weeks, it starts to lose its potency. So it's um, it's it's almost done now. And here I just uh, took a tossed salad, or I took uh, romaine lettuce. I threw in some arugula, um, radishes carrots, celery, and some purple onions, and then I threw in there some Mediterranean feta cheese, and I tossed it with a Greek um, salad dressing. So that's about all I have in terms of cooking. Um, the two uh, tenderloins that I have in the oven, um, 
I'll probably take those over to the neighbors. Um, they enjoy watching the show and they definitely enjoy the benefits of the excess food that we have. So, um, plus I like Bob and Carol a lot. They uh, help me so much and uh, they enjoy all the cooking we do. So, um, that's all that I have to talk about. So. Okay, well I'm gonna finish up with this last cocktail. Should be quick, I've already measured everything out. So this cocktail is a South Side Ricky. This is good. It's, this this is, really is good. This is a nice, refreshing cocktail that you can drink uh, anytime. It's actually a riff on a mojito. And as you can see, I have my mint in water, just like a bouquet. This is a great way to, to keep mint fresh and to keep it nice and hydrated. So this is gonna this calls for uh, um, five mint leaves. So basically, I'm going to take, this one looks like it has five leaves. I'm going to take it and smack them in because that will release the oils. And I'm just putting them into my uh, shaker tin. Uh, we're not going to muddle. I'm just going to, this one's just going to get shaped. So I already have two ounces of dry gin, one ounce of lime juice, three quarters ounces of simple syrup. And I put the mint leaves in. So you want to mix it, you put those ingredients in a shaker. Then we are going to, you're actually going to, actually before I fill that shaker with ice, this goes into a Collins glass, which a typical Collins glass is 10 to 11 ounces. So I'm going to fill my Collins glass with ice. Uh, I actually recommend using crushed ice, but I didn't want to mix the crushed ice. I only have one ice. Uh, ice container so I didn't want to mix it with but anytime you make a Collins or anything you want to fill that glass completely full of ice um, so I filled my Collins glass with ice now I got to fill my shaker with ice and then we are going to give this a shake We want to shake till it's frosty. That's right. And then, uh, whoops, I put my uh, my strainers in the sink already. And then this one, because this has the mint in it, we absolutely want to double strain because we don't want to get any other mint or any of that leftover remnants in the glass. Open that. <clears throat> and then we're gonna top that with club soda. Go ahead and you can do it. You can Look at it. me bartending. And then we're gonna take a sprig of fresh mint and a lime wedge with a little bit of cherry juice on it. And cheers, that is your Southside Ricky. That's Mike's class. Oh, good. We'll probably have that till tonight and then I'll break it. <laughs> That's okay. I always want more glasses. Whoops, let me, you can see, I gotta hide that recipe. Okay, sorry. Once I get mixing, I, uh, I get, forget. Okay, so Stephanie Norman says cheers. Cheers, cheers Stephanie. Betty Brown says, whoops. Wow, that looks great. Spicy one on up for us. That is the, uh, she's referring to the uh, uh, spicy okay. pork. Stephanie says, that looks delicious. Well, you thank can you order guys. That. Yeah, you guys can order that, um, the pork king good um, pork rinds, as yep. well as the crush stuff that I um, showed you in the jars. Um, right online, and that's what we did. We ordered uh, a sample pack, and um, well, somehow we got a pack of it in the mail. Yeah, we don't know where it we came don't know where from, it came from the but it was these bag. salt and vinegar pork rinds, which were like the best pork rinds I've ever had. I love pork rinds, and because I, I try to, the only time you know, I try to eat keto all week. And and mainly on the weekends, except for my cocktails, in which I try to limit myself to three or four. And uh, 
Yeah. And then, but so I was actually very excited. So I grew up eating pork rinds when I was a little kid um, in my mom's bar, Friday's Corner Bar. At that time, it was called Virginia's Corner Bar. They used to come from old Vienna, and it was just a little bitty bag, like a four ounce bag, and it had this little packet of, it was like Tabasco sauce, but it was very, a little, little more vinegary. And I used to eat those all the time. You know, it got to the point to where I was like, no, don't cheers. eat anymore. Don't eat anymore. So I just want to cheers with that one. You want to cheers with that one? Yeah. Cheers. 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 Cheers, cheers. cheers everybody. Happy weekend. Have a great weekend. I hope everyone had a happy Easter. Yes. I have to mention that. Happy Easter. And as always, you know, like, follow, and share. We're also on YouTube. Uh, you know, let your friends know if you, if you enjoy it. Yeah, your friends, please, yeah, we're, we're just trying to grow an audience time. and, you know, we're trying to get more interaction and, you know, we're always looking for people to come on the show and, and cook or do something. We don't care. You know, last right. week we had we Melissa and that was great. Yes, okay. we do. Okay. I can talk forever. I got all kinds of